Okay, so welcome to day three. I uh, hope you are having fun. So we're going to start with uh, a best doctoral paper session. Say it again. Okay, uh, this is the uh, first time we are doing uh, this year. We'll have, uh, we decided to organize this to motivate the doctoral students as well. Hopefully we will get more uh, papers next year. Uh, so there will be two papers in this session, which will be an hour long. So we, you can take, you can ask many questions hopefully. And this is also again, to provide feedback to doctoral students on the way uh, to their dissertation. For the first paper, it will be in person and then student had some, I think health issues this morning. So he, she couldn't make it, but Mohammed El Mursi will be doing it on behalf of her, right? So then the second presenter will be over Zoom. So let's welcome Mohammed first. Thank you. Okay, so now good. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for un, uh, unforeseen circumstances, like our uh, main presenter, like Sarwa Bugamila, didn't show up today. Um, so I will be like presenting like uh, in a still fur. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So our work today or our talk today is about like our recent work on slicing weighted energy harvesting while sensing networks with transmission range uncertainty. The work is done by Salwa Bugamira, PhD student from the University of Alberta, myself, Mohammed El Morsi, and Professor Ihab El Malah. So in our work, we consider energy harvesting wireless sensor networks that are operated and managed by network providers, where we have like two sides of the story here. We have the client side that wish to rent some network slice inside the network that meets some quality of service metrics. And we have the provider side that manage the network and try to allocate such slices for the clients in order to meet with the client defined quality of service metrics. But here is the challenge or the challenges that a network provider faces while managing such networks. So examples of such challenges include like the diversity of the node energy management scheme. So for example, like we can have an energy scheme that adapts the transmission range, let's say for example, based on the node energy level or adapts the amount of flow that the node can send in certain time interval or adapts some for example, like scheduling technique in order to make like nodes like active in some period or sleep in low power mode periods and so on and so forth. Another challenge that the management of such system faces is the diversity of the client quality of service metrics, which could be, for example, like coverage metrics, reliability metrics, and other metrics. We have like the third challenge, like the diversity of the provider provisioning strategies with the complexity of some underlying problems while managing such networks. So in our approach of managing such networks, we consider that each node is working with an energy management scheme that allows the node to select its transmission range based on its power level. Therefore, a node can exist in one of possible energy states with some probability. The client demand in our problem, it wants basically like to construct a probabilistically robust connected network. And in such network, the guarantee here in such like each slice is that we, like, we would like the probability that each node inside each slice can reach the sink with certain probability guarantee. And therefore, each slice should have satisfying a requirement on its connectedness reliability which again, in our problem, it defines like the term, what is the probability that the node can use slice nodes in order to reach the sink? We remark that basically like connectedness reliability computation have been introduced in the literature to be a RB complete problem. And we remark also that our work is the first in the literature to consider reliability metric for management problems. 
And that opens a new research direction with lots of possible extensions. So for the provider strategy, basically like the provider assigns some weight of that reflects like the node importance. So for example, like based on the geographical location of the node of each node. And what is like the strategy of basically like constructing the slices is that like it tries to construct like the slices with balanced weights. Several work have been introduced in the literature that aims to partition, like uh, includes like partitioning algorithms that aims to maximize the network lifetime. Starting from like well-known work, like for example, bees, leech, accent, and so on. In contrast, our work basically like introduce a novel resource sharing problem that serves energy harvesting wireless sensor networks where nodes can change their states dynamically over time, according to some probability distribution. In addition, we are taking reliability metrics into account while constructing these slices. The third objective is again, while constructing these slices, we try to balance like the weight of these slices, the total weight of these slices. So now let's discuss our proposal problem, which we call it, K weighted balanced slicing with range uncertainty. We abbreviate it here as KWBSRU. The inputs for our problem are a graph G that contains like one sync node. And for each non sync node, we have like some parameters associated a weight, which reflects like the node importance, and a set of possible energy states that the node can exist on with their corresponding transmission ranges and probabilities. <laughs> a second input for our problem is the number of slices that the provider wish to construct by the end. A third parameter, which is the connectedness reliability threshold, which we abbreviated here like as the threshold about like, again, like what is like, the minimal probability or what is like the cutting probability at which we say that whatever the node can join a slice yes or no in order to meet with the reliability metric. So our problem calls for finding k subgraphs that share the same thing, but they are otherwise no disjoint, such that for each subgraph, each node by using the subgraph nodes only has a probability to reach the sink greater than or equal to our defined threshold in our problem. The second requirement is that the minimum total weight is maximized. We remark that our problem is sharply hard, and therefore our work aims at this paper basically is to develop a framework for solving the introduced problem. So now let's talk about like, our proposed framework. Our proposed framework consists of three functions. The main function, which is the top in our hierarchy, which basically like do like the slicing process. And it benefits from like the services provided by other developed function, which is like the connect node disjoint sequence function and connect sequence function in order to drive some lower bounds to the reliability value for the nodes before deciding whatever to make them join the slices, yes or no. So let's go through some details about like each one of them. The main function, the function that will do the slicing by the end. The main function starts by initializing like K slices or K subgraphs by basically like appending like the sync to each one of them. And then what it will do is that it will arrange the nodes inside the network into BFS layering based on the lowest non-zero transmission range. We call here that like we have like multiple transmission ranges. So as you can see here, for example, that node, let's say nine, although like it has a high transmission range that allow it to go to the sink, basically like we place it in layer two. So what happens next is that the main function will go iteratively. And in each iteration, it's going basically like to select a node for each basically like slice 
that meets the reliability criteria. And while it do the selection process, and after filtering like the nodes that cannot like meet like the reliability criteria at this iteration, basically like it give more preference to a node that exists in a higher BFS layer. If we have multiple choices in the same BFS layer, then we selected the node with the higher weight. So for example, here, suppose that we have like two slices here. We have like the blue group and we have like the red group. Suppose that, oh, I went like one slide forward. Okay, this slide. Suppose that I actually like read the answer before reading the question. <laughs> so suppose that we have here like the red group that basically like have like node number one and the blue group which have like node number two. Suppose now that we would like to append in the next iteration, like a node to each group that meets again the reliability criteria, and that basically like increase like the weight of each slice. So what will happen is that like for the red group, we now like have like three candidate choices, either to go with the choice of node number five or six or seven. After testing like the reliability metric, node five meets like the reliability threshold, node seven meets the reliability threshold, but node six cannot meet it. So in that case, like the choice is basically like either to add the five or to add the seven. So since five basically like has a higher weight, then we add the five to the red group. With the same idea, if we go with the blue group, we have like node two in the blue group, we have two choices. So basically like we have like the choice of node seven or the node eight. So if we check these choices, you can see that they meet the reliability threshold. And that means that basically like we are going to select node seven since it has higher weight. So you can see here that this one has four, this one has three. Okay, so a key component here on the decision of the main function is basically like how to estimate the reliability metric. As we discussed, computing it is sharply complete. And therefore, we propose and they develop a function which is called connect node disjoint sequence in order to drive lower bounds for the reliability metric, which basically like can help the sync in its decision. So if we go through this function, how it works, the main idea here is that I will construct a maximal set of node disjoint sequences that can allow the node to reach the sync. And then I'm going to use basically like these sequences in order to drive lower bound for the reliability band. So the first stage is that like, I'm going to first of all, like finding, find these sequences. So in order to find these sequences, we basically like give more preference to sequences where nodes can use its lowest non-zero transmission range in order to construct a path to the sink, such that basically like each sequence is as short as possible, given that we are using like the lowest transmission range. So for example, if you can see here, like if we are basically like considering to measure like the reliability of node number 10, whatever it can make it to the sink by using like the blue group, yes or no, we have here like two sequences. We have seven and two, we have eight and three. As you can see here that we are, we are constructing our sequences. We try to give more preference basically like to the lowest transmission range. This means what? This means that basically like for each sequence, I can have multiple paths, multiple possible paths from the same sequence. For example, if let's say, for example, node 10, the dashed line here represents like the highest transmission range and like the source line here represents like the lowest transmission range. If node 10 is using like the highest transmission range and considering the sequence eight and three, then node 10, if it goes with the high state, it can go directly to three and then to the same. So each sequence holds multiple paths in time. So after obtaining the sequences, what we do? After obtaining the sequences, we use them in order to drive a reliability bound by basically saying that the lower bound that we wish to drive is equal to the summation for every possible state of the node that we are testing, the probability that the node exists in that state multiplied by the conditional probability that at least one of these sequences are operating. And I mean by operating is that they can make the node reach the sink, subject to that the node exists on that state that basically like I'm working with now. 
computing the second term of probability here implies that it's equal to basically like one minus the multiplication of the probability that all the sequences fail to basically like meet or make this node like reach the sequence. So in order to basically like compute this lower bound, one key parameter that we need in our computation is basically for one sequence, just one sequence. What is the probability that a node can use this sequence in certain state in order to reach the sequence? And that's where basically like we propose our third function, which is called connect sequence. The third function is implemented as a dynamic program that process like each node in the sequence, except that like the original node that we wish to test its reliability and the sync itself. And what you do is that it will process the nodes based on like the BFS layering. The state five that is used inside the dynamic program in order basically like to aggregate the network states and in order to optimize like the database created by the dynamic program, it basically like contains for each state five, the node state pairs of the boundary nodes that are reachable to the sync and that have still some unprocessed nodes that can reach this node at some state. The end goal of this function after it finished its processing is that it will compute for every possible state of the node that we are testing, what is the probability that the node can use the sequence, which we are giving here as an input in order to reach the same. So let's have now some example in order to show us how things work. So suppose that I have here, like this is our thing. This is node three, which is like my candidate that I wish to know based on this sequence, what is like the probability that it can make it to the sink. And we have like sequence nodes like one and two. So suppose here like that for each node, like we have like three possible states. So like high, low fail with some probability distribution. So initially we start our processing by saying that we have the sink. We are going basically like to start the processing node by node in the sequence until we get to X. So I start processing node one. I check all its possible states, the high, the low, and to check what are the combination in these states that make this node reach the sink, and as well, whatever this state is reachable by some other unprocessed node, yes or no. So for example, here, like I check like one in state high, one in state low, like, of course, like the third state, we consider that it has a zero transmission range, which is called like the failed state. So you can see that it doesn't appear like between the brackets here. It's not part from the state five since it's not reachable by the sink and it cannot be reached by other nodes. I keep state one high or node one in state high because again, like it reaches the sink and basically like it's reachable by other unprocessed nodes. There. With the same idea, I can grow my table to start the processing basically like node number two with its possible states and again update my state parts. So as you can see here, for example, like two in a state high with one in a state high with this probability, two in a state low and so on. On the third or the last stage in our example here, basically like when processing the node that we wish to determine its probability to reach the sink by the end using the sequence, what we do is that like we are going basically like to test, okay, for node three, for example, this one here, if it goes with the highest transmission range, which is marked here as dashes, basically like then any boundary or any state five that has like one in either low or high state, it will allow node three like to reach the sink. So in that case, you can see that it's conditional probability to use this sequence to reach the sink is basically like the summation of the probabilities in this range. Any state five that has one in the state either high or low. For the second conditional probability, that what is the probability that, for example, like node three in a state low, which means that node three is just using this closed line here to reach like the sink. Basically, like the probability here, it will be that I need node two in order to reach the sink. So in that case, like I'm marking like the state five, like too high, too low, too high, like with one high and one high and too high, too low with one low, one low. So these basically like four state fives can actually like make three in a state low to reach the sink. 
and that can be used to drive our conditional probability. So for our numerical results, so basically like we conducted our experiments on W by L grade deployed networks. And basically like we aim to construct like two slices. So in the first set of experiments, basically like we test like the quality of the obtained like slices. So basically like the normalized weight. So the normalized weight in terms of what is the weight of the slice divided by the total weight inside the network. So our algorithm show its effectiveness to construct balanced weighted slices. And not only that, basically, like we can see that varying the probability distribution. I mean by that, like increasing the probability that the node using like a higher energy state that allows like constructing like slices with more nodes. In the second problem, which like I will talk about it like very briefly due to the time, like basically, like we show here, like uh how to use like our framework to solve like an interesting like coverage problem where basically like we have here like a uh, like a network that is divided in squares where each square like have some weight and our aim here basically like is that like we would like to construct the slices such that like the weights of the covered squares by the nodes in this slice is basically like balancing so we did a transformation to our problem by basically like assigning weights to each node which is equivalent to like the weight of the covered area. And our results show that our framework not only can solve our original problem, but it can solve other interesting problems. And it can actually like cover each square with a balanced number of nodes. We did some Monte Carlo simulation in order like to see like what is the advantage of using our framework. Again, it's let's say, for example, like a baseline framework that just order the nodes and like divide them. And our results show that, like, in terms of the delivery ratio, our framework like, outperforms like baseline algorithm. So, for example, here, like, you can see that we have like more time slots that basically, like, we achieve a delivery ratio between 80% to 100%. So, for our concluding remarks, we formulated a novel resource sharing uh, problem for energy harvesting wild system network. And our algorithmic solution is presented. And its performance is investigated. And in the future, we would like to pursue and to expand more like our uh, novel direction here by designing node energy management schemes that yields competitive network reliability figures. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mohammed, for the nice presentation. So, do we have questions on the online? First, nope. Okay, anybody from here? Uh, clarification question, uh, how uh, the, the scheme is uh, for wireless sensor networks and then the transmissions are broadcast transmissions? Yes. So do, does the model account for concurrency in the change, like uh, there are nodes transmitting concurrently, and therefore they, there is multiple access interference in one of the relay nodes. Is that taken into account in the probabilities, or that will be next steps? Uh, okay, so like yes, like it's taken into account, like while computing like the probability. Like we assume in our work that like the probability is estimated like prior to running uh, the framework by using either like simulation or by using like real experiments where we record basically like the probability of each state. But uh, uh, basically like the question like can open future work as well, which we are considering nowadays, which is like, what will be like the effect if we take into account flows and capacities of the links itself? The question is more on the interference side. Yeah. He's asking about more of the interference than you do like multiple all that and so just to, <laughs> yeah. So the question is like I think he was asking just to repeat like to interference related uh, concerns. Did you include in the prob probability like because over the multiple ops that when they communicate it might create interference, right? Uh no, that's Not something really. that we are now working on. Okay, yeah, just okay. to clarify. Okay, another question? Or oh, you're gonna ask a question? Okay. 
on your paper <laughs> or answer? So, so, so just a clarification question. So the first question was about interference in a slice when you compute the slice, but you also mentioned something about the probabilities uh, in the context of energy harvesting wireless sensor networks. So maybe you would like to clarify what are these probabilities uh, that, that we are talking about in the context of energy harvesting? Okay, so uh, basically like each node, it has like a set of possible transmissions and it adapts these transmissions based on its energy level, uh, like level. This means that the energy level of the node fluctuates over time because basically like who knows like what will be harvested next, who knows like the power consumption that will be done and so on and so forth. So the probability that I mean here is that like if we, let's say for example, like run some experiments for our network over time to see what will be like the decision of the energy management unit about like which state to take. Then we can measure like the amount of time slots that basically like the node fit, let's say for example, certain state, and that will represent basically like our probability that we are considering here. Okay, question. Okay, um, if you, you mentioned that you are going to change the uh, transmission power, um, doesn't, is, isn't it the case that you then open uh, yourself to new problems if you uh, play with the transmission power in your, in your system? For instance, you have a hidden node problem suddenly occurring. You don't know who is in your neighborhood. Uh, yes, definitely. Like it can, like uh, like increasing the transmission can create like more challenges for most possible like uh, future work. So uh, like it's still like it's one of the parameters that was explored in the literature. But there are like some expansions that can be done to take into consideration. Let's say, for example, like hidden problem. What will be the effect of increasing the transmission range on the interference level on each node, and so on and so forth. So actually, like our mode can be expanded in the future to include like more parameters that reflect basically like these uh, metrics. But it's not currently part of your work to consider hidden node problem and other uh, problems occurring when you're changing the transmission power. Uh, like we are currently like working in the level of like the network layer of the routing protocol. So basically like we assume that if two nodes are in range of each other, then they can communicate with each other. Although, like again, like it can be expanded by, for example, like including some probabilistic model on the communication edges themselves. Okay, maybe one more question. Um, if I use your solution, is it uh, workable in, for instance, in a very noisy environment? What are you doing then? Okay, like if I, okay, like uh, if I'm going to use like my solution, like in the noise environment, and I'm going to supply it with like the correct probability distribution. And I consider that like my energy management unit is taking into account with the decision of the transmission range, what is the energy level of the node and what is the amount of noise inside the channel, then yes, it can be used. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, maybe. So first. Now, okay, first of all, thank you very much. Very interesting presentation and work. I've worked in sensor networks for a long time, so it's it's refreshing to see it uh, presented. Um, so I had a couple of questions. One of them was about the lifetime of the network. Yes. So now you're going to slice it up into, let's say, subgraphs, yes. and you're trying to look at the optimal assignment for, of the resources to the tasks that you have. Yes. Uh, what is the main definition of lifetime for the network as a whole? Like until one of the partitions fail or until the first node fails? How do you define the lifetime of the network? Um, my second question is, uh, what about nodes that might be, uh, you know, you're doing your slicing now. So do you assume that a node can only serve under one slice or is it possible for say boundary nodes, the ones that are sitting between partitions to serve more than one? Uh, okay, so like for the first question, what is like the lifetime, the lifetime, it means like for our problem here that like each node uh, inside like each slice can reach like the thing. So this means that like if I have like a node failure in my system, then I consider basically like that this is like a lifetime problem. Since like the user demand from the beginning is that I wish to ensure that every node can connect with the thing. So, but again, like 
that can open like possibilities like in the future is that like these are like defined metrics by the user so what if the user let's say for example say that i would like far from my slice let's say for example to be reachable by the thing which creates like a different problem uh for Sorry, can you repeat the second so question? my second question was about the membership of nodes. Can they only join one slice or could some nodes be members of multiple slices, especially if they are at the boundaries between two regions? So like in this work, we consider that like each slice node can serve only like the slice node, although like we are currently working on another paper for actually like taking into account like sharing resources between like multiple slices. Thank you very much. Okay, so we gotta move on for the sake of fairness. We thank uh, Mohammed again.